Welcome to ATC CAD. I'm David Atkins. Today's episode comes from a subscriber who I get to see pretty regularly around town. He's a 3D printer who has recently jumped headfirst into the hobby. I mean, I thought I had, but I only bought three printers. My man bought eight. So far. Anywho, it's nice to talk shop with him when I see him. He asked me, how do you 3D print logos? I can't find any good tutorials. Can you make one for me? Well, of course. Today we're going to discuss how to take a vector graphics file. I'll be using SVGs, but you can also use DXFs. If you don't have an SVG or a DXF of the logo you want to add, you may want to hit subscribe right now. The next episode in this series will show how to convert raster graphics like JPEGs into an SVG using free open source tools. You won't want to miss it. SVGs are an image format that store visual information in vector format. This means that instead of storing an image as a grid of pixels, it stores lines and such as an equation. This means you can change the resolution to pretty much anything and still have a picture that looks great. Think of it as the 2D version of an STL. Given that Fusion is also a vector program, merging these two formats is quite easy. Once you've imported it properly, you can use it to engrave, emboss, or carve a logo or image into whatever model you want. Opening up Fusion, we will go to the Insert panel and choose Insert SVG. I need to pick Insert from my computer and go find the file in question. In this case, I'm using the logo from UC Santa Cruz, Go Banana Slugs. It will ask me to select the plane I want to place the SVG. This is where you have different choices depending on what you want to accomplish. For this case, I'll simply select the bottom origin plane. After you click the plane, the view will orient itself to that plane and give you the chance to position the image. The arrows and square let you move it around, the circle lets you rotate it, and the little arc lets you scale it. You can also click the hourglass shaped icons to flip it along the X and Y axis. You can do it graphically using the icons, or you can use the dialog on the right to adjust it numerically. Once you're done positioning it, click OK. The SVG has become a sketch, and we can go ahead and finish that sketch. Now that we've brought in the SVG, we can create a 3D model from it for a keychain, tag, or something similar. Here's how. Go to the Create panel and choose Extrude. You can also type E. Every closed area will show up as a profile that you can extrude independently or together. For the outline, I can simply click and extrude at my desired distance. I like to orbit my model before I actually extrude it. You can do this by holding the Shift key while holding down the button on your mouse wheel. Pull it out as far as you want and click OK. When you click OK, Fusion will hide the rest of the logo. You can bring it back by simply expanding the Sketches folder and clicking the eyeball icon. When I try to go to this center area, however, I see there's a problem. The center area has a gap somewhere that's preventing Fusion from finding the correct profile. This is pretty easy to fix. We can right-click on the sketch and find the gap. I know it's going to be somewhere where a white endpoint is at. Looking around carefully, I found the area here in the lower right. I'll just draw a new arc to close it up, not even worrying about the weird arc that's already there. After drawing it, the profile is highlighting properly and I can continue on and finish the sketch. Since I probably want the center to be extruded the same height as the outline, I'll double click on that extrusion in the timeline and add that profile to the extrusion. The remaining profiles can be extruded individually or together depending on the look that you want. When you make each one, you can choose to make the new extrusion to join to the existing ones or set it as a new body. Do it as a new body if you're intending to create a multicolored print or as a join if you want to do a single color. You can always edit the initial sketch to add new closed areas. If you're having issues with a specific area, like the eyes here, you can also trace over it using your regular sketch commands. Once we're finished and happy with the results, we can right-click on the project name in the model browser and choose Save to Mesh. Now we can choose what format we want to export to. I'm choosing a 3MF here so I can color it easily in my slicer. And you're done!
Personally, I never make signs or keychains, so I'm usually using them to emboss or engrave an existing model. The way that you do this depends on the shape of the face you want to engrave or emboss. If the face you want to use is flat, the process is very similar. Import SVG, but this time click the face that you want to use. Again, you'll scale it, rotate it, and position it the way you want it to be placed. If you extrude it into the existing solid, Fusion will cut into the part and will engrave the shape into the part. If you pull it away, then you get an emboss. Simple. Engraving on a curved face requires a couple of extra steps. You can't use a curved face as a sketch plane, so you need to start by creating a construction plane. Now there are a lot of different planes you can construct, and this video isn't going to go into all the options, but generally, tangent to a face or offset plane works very well. Here we have a cylinder that we want to engrave our lovely logo onto. I'm going to start with the tangent plane command. Following the dialog, I click on the curved face I want to use and rotate the plane until it's oriented the way I want. I can then use this plane to import my SVG, just like we have earlier. I can use the extrude command to finish this, but if I do, then the top of the bottom face will be parallel to my plane, and in this case, I want my logo to be curved to match the face of my part, so I'll be using the emboss tool. With this tool, I select the profiles I want to use, select the face I want to add it to, and let Fusion take care of the rest. I can run the tool several times if I want different areas to have different depths, but you gotta be careful, it's better to do them all in one go while the curved face is still there. You want to make sure that the depth or height of your logo is reasonable for the printer and nozzle that you want to use. Embedding a logo 0.1 millimeter will look fine in Fusion, but terrible if you're printing with a 0.8 millimeter nozzle. Also consider the orientation of your print. This file will look terrible if I print it flat like it's shown here, and it'll also require a lot of supports if you print it in another direction, so honestly, you probably shouldn't place a logo on a side face like this, unless you like doing a lot of post-processing. If you're hoping to add different color to your engraved logo, just run the command twice, once to cut the area you want to use, and once to create a new body that will fill that space. So that's how you add SVGs into Fusion. Adding them to models you've made isn't super hard. But what if you wanted to put a logo on a 3D print that you downloaded as an STL? Well, that, my friends, is a bit more complicated. You'll need to check out next week's video where I add a logo to this cool controller stand that I found. It's going to introduce you some mesh models in Fusion, which is where a lot of people tend to get lost. If you like this, you should click the like button. It's either the gentlemanly thing to do, or gangsta AF, depending on which motivates you to edit more. We recently hit the 1,000 subscriber mark, which is freaking amazing. Thanks to everyone who's been so supportive of the channel. You can follow us on social media if you haven't been burned out on that kind of thing yet. Also, if this is your first time here, you may not know that I teach Fusion 360, plus a lot of other CAD programs. You can find my classes and sign up for them at AtkinsTechConsulting.com. Oh yeah, I made a book! Actually, I made three. Print and filament logs for tracking the stuff you print. Available in paperback and hardback. Are you a bad enough dude to buy one? Find out from the link below. As always, I'm David, and happy catting.